All right, you guys, we are back with back in our normal habitats <laughs> for a little bit anyway, <laughs> not, not bit. long, not long no. <laughs> um, with behind the bikini and we are on episode 46 because we screwed up last week. It was actually 45 last week. So uh, we are 46 this week. So before we get into today's topic, which is going to be about managing expectations, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all of the fun things, hit the buttons, wherever they may be. And on that note, how does it feel to be home? Oh, God, it feels so good to be home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a long time. <laughs> you said, what, 13 days is when you were, how long you were gone? 13 days, yes. And I would say for about eight of them, I didn't sleep at all. <laughs> so I remember you were saying like that the one coming out of St. Pete, I don't think you slept for like two days. Yeah, it was, I was up for a total of 35 hours and then... We landed on Sunday after St. Pete for a wedding. And so I had a two hour nap and then I had to wake up again and just go to the wedding. And then we got home from the wedding at like midnight and our flight landed or left at five. So we had to wake up at three, like literally it was just like little two hour spurts for a few days there. <laughs> so how did that affect your, your, your prep? Like, did you, did you feel it more or? I just kept dropping weight that entire week. I think I was probably under eating. Um, Jamie and I had a plan when I was in Florida, I told her that I want, I worked hard for the three weeks before that, because I knew I was going to Florida and all I wanted was to go to my favorite sushi restaurant for a refeed. Right. So her and I had this plan and she was fine with it. And then, um, it was just, we were so busy cause we were uh, preparing our house for renters. We finally, right. uh, we found a, a long-term renter and Drew and I, when we moved to Arizona, I feel like I've said this on the podcast, literally, we just left in the middle of the night, we didn't plan it. And mm -hmm. we just said, we have to leave now, or we're never going to leave. So our house was just left how we left there. it. So we were, you know, trying to, we haven't seen the gym in a while, we were trying to manage the gym and then get the house prepared. We also had between Drew and I nine athletes at, on stage at St. Pete. So it was a wild week. Um, and I just feel like I was, I wasn't probably eating. So I was kind of like intuitive mm -hmm. eating every day. And after the sushi refeed, I dropped two pounds. And so yeah. he was like, okay, we'll just keep going with your intuitive, you know? And so I think I dropped four and a half pounds that, that whole week. Um, and then I met Jamie and Greg in New York on Monday. Um, so she was okay. like, let me see you what's going on. So I said, she's like, you look really good. So we just did a couple of refeeds in New York, which was really nice. You know, I was able to go out with them and have some time yeah. and I, I just kept dropping. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I clearly, I needed it. Um, yeah. so it's, everything's moving really well. I feel really good. Um, it's, this has been a really, really smooth prep. And the only thing that's changed is me living in Arizona, you know, so yeah. mindset's everything truly like my, yeah. I'm such, it's such a good place. I'm so happy. All my clients are doing well. It's just, everything's really good. We're kind of getting settled into the, the, the flow of doing all this finally, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy to think about that, you know, even coaching for several years, but at the same time, it's like, you're starting to get to that echelon of, okay, I have to be a top athlete and a top uh, coach at the same time. It's hard to manage that. It's hard to do that. You know, yeah. um, it's funny that prejudging Drew was looking at your, your pictures and, and video and stuff. We were sitting there in the audience. He's like, yeah, she dropped, I think he said 1.8 pounds or something like that overnight, overnight or something. <laughs> yeah. And I was laughing because he asked if I you ordered for Chipotle and I was like, he was asking me if I wanted anything. I said, no, because I'm not, I'm not in that, on that level. And I'm sitting there watching you eat Chipotle and I'm like, okay. I was yeah. like, I need to go get my chick, my one chicken breast. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like I, like it's, it's so funny. Like I've, I've battled every year, like my eating habits since I've been my very first coach, we've talked about this. It was ground beef and mm -hmm. asparagus. So after that, when I found macros, I was like, wow, this is great. You know? And not that I was ever too crazy with my macros, but I definitely had a lot more like additives and packaged food and things that I don't know, just ultimately yeah. I figured out what are holding me back. So like now, like I have oatmeal in the morning and then other than that, I eat chicken, rice, and blueberries. And mm -hmm. like I'm tracking sodium tea and tracking water to a tea. I really have not eaten like, oh, let me go like one more gram or like, I've literally just been so on and I just, it's, I just drop it. I'm keeping my meat high. So I'm just really con like controlling my variables, which has allowed my food to stay higher and my cardio mm -hmm. to stay lower, you know? So in the past where I've like, you know, done nibbles here and there and 10 grams over here, 10 grams over there, like ultimately, as I always say, it adds up at the end of the week. So yeah. like, if I just stick to the plan longer, I don't suffer as much, you know, right. and it's, it's really cool. Like I'm really, I really challenged myself this year. I said, embrace the suck, like go all in. Like you said, like trying to find like that, you know, the top athlete mentality and 
it's working. Um, so I was really jazzed. I did my check-in photos this week. Like my glutes have definitely grown. I've definitely filled out the upper outer glute. Um, did an in-person check-in with Jamie finally after three weeks. And she was like, you look really good. Like we're ahead. We're supposed good. to be 10 weeks out and we look like six weeks out right now. So good. all's good. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what was fun. Like, you know, at the same time, it's, you, you had a you know very stressful time the last few weeks, but to see that you've been able to hold on and, and progress that much, you know, during a very stressful period in your work schedule, it's encouraging for you, but it's encouraging for other people to see that too. You know, I think, yeah. One of the things that that um, I've, I've noticed you've been posting more in regard to your your prep and things like that, too. And I think people do look at that kind of stuff because it's helpful to be able to relate to somebody, you know, and just say, OK, well, if they're struggling or you know if they can do it, then I can do it. You know what I mean? Like I, that's that's why I post about my check ins and stuff, because I want to show people like, listen, if I can do this, you can do this. Right. You know, it's just it's it's just putting one foot in front of the other every single day more than anything else. So. Um, so what's your plan for this, this weekend? Do you have a show or are you home? Oh, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> we, we said, we said on our, you were on our team call yesterday. Drew was like, we're going to, we're sick this weekend. All right, yeah. <laughs> no we're, we're checking out. Talk to us or send us anywhere. Oh, no. um, I have one athlete on stage at Republic in Texas. So I just have okay. to uh, peek her. And so that's easy. And um, then we were supposed to leave on Monday for masters Nats to be there for the guys, but, um, Drew had a couple guys pull out. So now we don't have to leave till Thursday, which is so nice. nice. So yeah. Yeah, we were going to be there Monday to Monday. Now we're going to be there th uh, Thursday to Monday. So That's, I leave again these, next Thursday. These master shows are so long, like the same thing with me. So I typically have like a couple of figure girls. So I'm usually at masters from like Wednesday really? to Sunday, you know what I mean? But I don't have any figure girls this year. And so Us I told too. Dan, no, yeah, on the team. So, no, none. And I, so I was yeah. like, I told Dan, I was like, I was like, take it off my schedule because I'm going to adjust the hotel. So I don't have to go a day ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. We got some money back on the flight and the hotel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if anywhere you can, you know, it's safe. It's not that I don't love that. We don't have any figure roles or anything I on know, stage, you know, know, but, um, anyway, how was your, how's your prep? How's your week going? So pretty good. Um, you know, I, I, like I've mentioned before, I figured out the whole sweetener thing and it's made such a huge difference. It's just crazy how much one little thing can make such a huge difference. I had like, I, I was, I told Jamie at, at Universal, I was like, I went to the bathroom all weekend. <laughs> I was like, I've never done that at a show. Like you, do, you guys don't understand. Like I get up so early to do hair and makeup. So my body doesn't have a chance to really rest at night. You know, I don't get good sleep. So if that happens, it's really hard to go to the bathroom when you get up in the morning. And that's my routine. Yeah. And I was like, every day I was like clockwork. I was like, oh my God, like this, I've never had this happen ever. And that's amazing. The, the weird part about it was I was really, I was really hungry. I was having cravings and then I was really thirsty all week weekend. And I was like, this is odd. Like I'm not usually thirsty. You know what I mean? Like I want yeah. water all the time. So as soon as I got home from universe that night, I got my period like oh. immediately. So I was like, okay. Oh, and it was like four or five days early. So I was like, Oh, okay. Well this, that explains why I was having these cravings. That explains why I was, you know, I was thirsty. It explains all these things. Right. So, um, and it was really, really light again. Like I said, last, last month was super light. This, this month was super light again. It was like, it was two days and it was barely anything. And I'm just like, well, you're lean though. Like I saw you, you're getting really lean. I think it has to do with me getting my body fat levels going lower, you know? Oh, for so, sure. Yeah. Um, how I many think, pounds? You, you just checked in or posted, today. I think that you were 10 pounds off. I, well, well now this I'm, was last week. I was, I had seen yours this morning. I okay. dropped another pound this week. I dropped another okay, so pound this nine, week. so you're nine pounds off? Yep. And nine okay. weeks out. So, you know, Perfect. I'm right, I'm like right on track. Right. So, yeah. and I was worried about that with, with going, cause I said, I was like, I was in such a good groove going into universe. I was like, man, I don't want to fuck this up because I'm, oh, I'm I like, feel that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, so, you know, I got to universe and like the first thing that happened that first day was, um, was Tatiana won her pro card in, in fitness. So that hyped me up and I was like, okay, I'm going to go do my cardio. I'm going to do my training. Like I'm good. Like I was like, I, I have no problem. So the fact that I got everything in that day really set me up for a more successful weekend, I think. Um, cause Friday I didn't do anything Friday. I just took a rest day. Um, me too. I planned it that way because I knew with the with the schedule and stuff it was going to be like that. And then Saturday I was right back on it again. So I really didn't lose any time. That's the other thing about, like I said, with Masters, like taking that Thursday off of my schedule because now I don't have to have another another off day. You know what I mean? Like 
now it's like I can I can manage having one day where I don't do my training and stuff like do that, anything. like have a rest day, right? So and that's the day that we're there for pre-judging and finals and all that kind of stuff. So we're good. Like these one-day shows, cool. Like once we get past that, you know, especially at the national level, it's because you're there all day long. Yeah. You know, it's different if you're at like a pro show or something like that because they, you know, they boom, boom, they're done or, you know, whatever. These national level shows are long. No, we were there all day. We had like a yeah. 30 minute break in between yeah. pre judging and finals. Pre judging yeah. went over and the judges took a 30 minute break and we went up to the room and I didn't even eat. I found a snack and I, or a water and I was like, all right, let's go right back down. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. I ate and I, and then I waited, no, I waited for the girls to come back so I could do their hair and makeup touch-ups. And then I went back into finals. So that's actually and that was <laughs> that I dropped and I was like, how yeah. the hell am I going to get my cardio in today? Like I'm trying to figure this out, blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. I messaged Jamie and she was like, just take off a cardio today. Yeah. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. No, yeah. and that's, you know, that was the other thing too. This was the first show where I was there as not only like the stuff that I normally do, but also having prep clients. So that was a new, a new challenge for me. <laughs> I, was like, yeah. I was like, well, I was like, this is a whole lot more when you start adding that, those, those, those variables in there too. And it was just like, so yeah, not just coming in a pose with you. They're coming and say, how much water, how much sodium, what do you want me to do? Where do I go? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I, I'm a little bit nervous about masters because I have a lot of girls in masters as far as the presentation part is concerned. And then I have prep clients too. So I'm like, just not gonna sleep. <laughs> basically, just not gonna sleep. That's basically how that's gonna go. So I'll sleep. Like I say to everyone it. all weekend. I was like, if you see me, send caffeine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Send, the send one the thing that's the one, yeah, the one thing that's good about masters versus like universe is there's no open. So, so the classes should be done. Like, what took forever at universe is the fact they have masters and open classes. Right. So I think it'll go, I think, hopefully, depending on the numbers, it'll go a little bit quicker for prejudging. You know what I mean? So we won't be there until whatever it was, four or five o'clock in the afternoon for prejudging. So for pre for prejudging. Yeah. For prejudging. Just for prejudging, guys. Just for prejudging. So there's that's a good thing. Five PM. <laughs> yeah. The one thing that's bad about masters is that prejudging starts at eight AM, not nine AM. So I'm looking at my schedule. I freaked out yesterday because Dan forgot to shut down my my hair and makeup booking and we had another girl book yesterday. I was like, I cannot take her. I'm like, we got to refund her money because I will be doing her makeup at 2 a.m. I can't do that. I cannot do it. You need I was to like, too. Yeah. well, and just it's not fair to her as a client either. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I don't, I, the, the, the earliest that I will go as far as makeup is concerned is 3 a.m. That's just, that's the earliest I'll go. And that's what I, 8 I think anything about that yeah. is ridiculous. Well, that's, and that's sure. what, that's what 8 a.m. prejudging. If it's a, if it's a 9 a.m. prejudging, I won't, I'll do it four o'clock and that's it. That's, that's the earliest I'll go. So I'm like, it's just not fair to me. It's not fair to them. It's not fair to anybody. You know what I mean? So I just don't, I just don't do that. So um, so I texted her real quick. I was like, I just need to let you know we're going to refund your money because I cannot take you. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, it is what it is. I was like, I I, I, didn't, I told her, I was like, I don't think you want to come in at 2 a.m. for hair and makeup anyway, do you? <laughs> she was like, no. I was like, okay, good. <laughs> it's a good problem to have. But... <laughs> I know. I know. But it's, it sucks at the same time. So I want to help. Like, I want to I want to do it for her. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I got to think about the well-being of everybody involved. Of, you know? of both. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So, but yeah, so, I mean, as far as the prep is concerned, it's going well. Like, um, you know, when I got back here on Sunday, Dan and I went into DC again and just kind of walked around to this 4th of July weekend that we didn't do anything, obviously, because we were in Jersey. Was it? I know. <laughs> so, so we went into DC and thinking, you know, they'll have stuff going on for 4th of July because it's, you know, it's still the weekend, Sunday, whatever. Nothing was going on. There's hardly anybody out. I mean, it was 96 degrees out, so I get why there wasn't a lot of people walking around. But I just figured with it being 4th of July, they would have stuff going on in DC and there was nothing going on. So we walked around a little bit, which was good. I got my steps way up, you know, all of that. So my step count was really good for this week. Um, and like I said, I mean, coming into today, I dropped another full pound from last week. So I'm going to, I'm in, when I took my photos this morning too, I was like, I sent them in. I was like, that's just, this is the, the tightest my waistline has ever looked at this weight by, by far. And it's oh, exciting. It is. And I think a lot of it has to do with the training and how we've changed training with fit body, you know? So for those of you that aren't on our team and stuff like that, we have very specialized, very specialized bikini training. Thanks to your husband. You know, so I think that's a big, I think that's a big deal. I think that's a big part of it. Um, I just see my waistline like shrinking in front of my eyes and plus the digestive digestion aspect of it, you know, that it's been so much better and it's just, I don't even have to struggle to hold my core in anymore, you know? So 
I'm kind of Speaking excited. Speaking of the devil, he's about to walk behind us. <laughs> we were just talking, talking about you. About, His ears are you and your great training and how Sean's waistline is the smallest it's ever been. Can you hear him? No, I can't hear him. What do you say? It's not rocket science. You just have to think outside the box. <laughs> so a Drew Brandon answer. I love it. Nothing special. Nothing special. It's nothing special. Just... <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. So, so yeah. interrupting our scheduled programming for just a moment here to introduce our brand new YouTube channel partners, Liquid Sunrays. If you know anything about me, you know that I've used Liquid Sunrays, nothing but Liquid Sunrays, my entire competitive career for 15 years. And we are so excited to welcome them as an official partner of our YouTube channel now. So if you've never checked them out, scan the QR code right here, or I will also put a link for their site down into the description box below. Get over there, check out their products and services, book them for your show, get their DIY stuff, get their competition skin prep. You'll want to use a skin prep even when you're not in competition prep. It's that fantastic. And let them know that I sent you. You can use code cuties15. And again, thank you so much for your belief in us and in our products and in our services. We believe in you just as much. So thank you so much for your support, Liquid Sunrays. And again, scan this QR code right here. Go check them out. Let Mama Rays know that Mama so, Cutie sent you. So yeah, as far as that's concerned, I think everything's going pretty well. Um, the next few weeks are gonna be are gonna be very, very busy because we've got masters. There's a local show here the weekend after that, then there's Tampa, then there's there's Nashville Fit Show, then there's North Americans, and then we're into the time frame when I'm gonna be competing, you're gonna be competing too. You know, so I haven't I have literally been... this is my last weekend at home till yeah. the Olympia. Like last weekend at home. Yeah. 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 And I've... you just named the schedule and I'm yeah. at, I'm at I'm at opposite places of you other than Tampa. Um, but I'm at North Americans and the okay. national shows, but yep. yeah, so it's Tampa, then Tahoe and there's okay. something in the middle of there. I think it's clash or something. Then we go to North Americans and then okay. I start competing. <laughs> yeah. Same. I was like, you know, and I was looking at my, my schedule for shows after that. I was like, I haven't put anything on my schedule other than the Olympia and then the Ben Weeder that's in November because that's the time frame when I'm going to be competing. So I'm like, I can't compete, can't commit to shows until I know where I'm going to be. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. It's crazy that's how fast you have to be a coach, you know, and yeah. that's what people are, you know, athletes ask all the time, you know, like, how do you balance being an athlete yourself and a coach? And mm -hmm. I will not put athletes on the same weekend I'm competing. So that's mm -hmm. why I have to be very strategic about where I place my girls. And we have a very honest conversation about that in the beginning. And most of the time it works out perfectly. You know, I'm not competing yeah. every weekend. So, you know, if they're close, I'll, I'll do myself. And then the next weekend I do them. And it's about a balance, you know, and yep. ultimately all of us are in the same boat that we would put our athletes before us anyway. So that's why we, we have to draw that boundary with ourselves as well, if not letting any athletes compete the same weekend, because we would focus on them and not on us. Right. And is that, is that fair too, you know? So it's, that's right. it's a very fine balance and it took me some time to figure out, but it's all about planning, planning and preparation. Yep. I figured that out early, early on, like before I ever coached, because my husband and I did a show together once in 2012 and I did his posing. I did his makeup. I did his tan. I did all of that. And we did the show together. So I didn't, I didn't focus on me at all. I focused on him the whole time. Exactly. So I was like, no, I was like, I can't. I was, oh yeah, we talked about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't, there's no way. I'm like, I just, and I didn't even do all of that. I was just, you know, trying yeah. to be a supportive wife backstage. And yeah. I was like, oh, I <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I can't. I'm like, I can't. And I know that just from, just from this past weekend too, because I'm so like, being a coach, you have to be micromanaging on, on show weekends, you know, when they're eating, when they're taking pictures, when they're sleeping, you know, when all that kind of stuff, you have to micromanage everything. And it matters. Like the, the, the girl that I had in over 50, she, um, you know, she, she, with her prep, it was a little different because I took her over a couple weeks out from the show. So her body was already very tired. And so we had to be very careful about what we were doing. And when she went into 50 and over, she looked great. She looked, she did everything well. You know, there's still things we need to work on and things like that, obviously, but she did a lot better than we initially thought. And then when she came, by the time she came out for 40, it was just like, it was, she was just tired. She was done. Flat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was over. I was like, and we talked about it. It was like, I was like, your body's tired. We know this, you know what I mean? So she's going to do masters. She really wants to do masters. We went through this whole thing because she thought she wasn't eligible to do masters uh, because she's a resident here in, this, in the U S she's not a citizen. But I went and talked to JM and he pulled up the, 
the NBC News and showed like eligibility. And she's he's like, no, she's she's eligible for this. I was like, well, damn, okay, perfect. Because she wanted to do North Americans, and I told her, I was like, I was like if you want to do it, I mean, I'll, I'll support you. I said, but I really so don't want you to be. Well, I don't want you to be in prep for another eight weeks. That's you know, true. Yeah. I, I'm like, we already know what we have to do. We talked to Evelo. We already know what your feedback was. You know, we know what we need to do. We want you to get a pro card. So this is, these are the things we need to do. We need to grow. And um, I was like, I really don't want to take two months of you still in a deficit. You know what I mean? Like two months is not, not enough time. We can reverse you a little bit, but we can't make significant improvements. Two weeks, we can get you tighter, you know? Yeah. So I was yeah. like, we can do masters. I was like, I have no problem with that. And just see if we can get you a little bit tighter, maybe bump you up a few spots, that kind of thing. I was like, even if you do win your pro card, we already know we got to go grow. I said, so, you know, we, we're, we're close. I said, but I, I don't have a problem with, with you staying in a deficit for two more weeks. I'm not really comfortable with eight weeks, you know? So, yeah. but, and I had that honest conversation with her. I said, listen, at the end of the day, I'm going to do what you want to do. I said, but I'm going to be honest with you too. I think this is the, the direction to go. So she's excited. She's already telling me she's super hungry right now. It's like, well, that's what happens when you come out. We're ver reversing her out of universe, basically. You know, it's like your your hunger hormones are going like this right now, saying feed me. You know, from the carb up from universe and pulling her back down. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. usually a sign too that they're getting tired. And yeah. that shows very hard to manage. You know, I gotta really think about this for next year too for the women that are in the fifty. 40, mm -hmm. 35, right? Because once Absolutely. they pull them into that backstage area, you have no access to them. You can't feed them. Like you could maybe get a rice cake or two to them, but it's not convenient. Um, so you really got to be strategic in how you're filling them out and keeping them full and energized when they're doing those multiple back-to-back -back classes. Because each class in pre-judging took at least 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And if they're doing all of them, you know, you have to think, so that's 10, 15 minutes on stage and then a couple classes go and then they go on, up again. Like that's a long time mm -hmm. um, to stay energized you know and uh, we were talking about that on our call yesterday our uh, coaching call with that body you know greg was like you, know, you have to be really mindful of managing your athlete to rest yep. when they're not backstage at a big national show like that like keep them in their room keep them with their feet up because once they get backstage it's go time like that's right turn it on figure it yep. out for those two hours but before that rest um, so the, again, you know, I'm always constantly learning and taking that advice and the, how these shows are running and, you know, these are my notes for next year. I was trying to make notes of when each uh, class was going on stage mm -hmm. for next year, like an estimate of when they're going to be on and, um, you know, just keep doing that data <laughs> yep, <that's laughs> to right. make us all better, well, you know? You know, this kind of goes into our topic for today, which is the managing expectations aspect, because it can change that quickly in the matter of a show, you know, not just, not just from show to show, but in a show, like, you know, again, going back to my client was significantly better in 50 and over versus 40, you know, just, just a matter of an hour later. And again, it's, it's like, you know, there's, there's, when we're talking about these age class classes, it's not just the age class, it's the high classes too. And some of these high classes have 20 girls in them. So, you know, you're looking at 50 and over, they, she was class E in 50 and over, you know, we're talking about six, seven, eight classes, depending on, depending on which age group they're in. Right. It's a lot. People don't realize masters has exploded as far as numbers are concerned. I said it last year and I'll say it again. I said this last year that that was the most competitive show I've been to all year. Yeah. Those masters divisions are 100%. insane. I would, I would even go so far to say that some of those master divisions look better than the open girls. Like it was that, like that Absolutely. competitive. I was, Absolutely. I was blown away last year. I was blown away this year. Like these girls look amazing. And you know, I just got off a console call with someone who's 53 years old. She's like, I just don't know how much more muscle I can gain at this age. I'm like, a lot. Yeah. I can gain a lot. You mm -hmm. have an advantage at that age, you know, muscle maturity. And uh, it's, just, it's amazing. I'm, just, I'm yep. proud and in awe. And I hope I look like that at 53. <laughs> I know. Right. I'm like, I'm like, I'm trending. I'm 42. I'm trending. Exactly. Right. Like but it's it is, incredible. It, it's it insane. Incredible. Like the girls walk on stage. Drew said this when, when, uh, when my girl walked on stage too, he was like, she's, she's over 50. He goes, she doesn't Your look Your client 50. does not look over 50 at all. I'm like, can I see her ID? Like she looks amazing. <laughs> she does. She does. She does. So yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy to see that kind of stuff. And it's like I said, it's inspiring. I mean, it shows you like, so like there's like there's even girls on the stage that are over 60 like it's crazy to see that and they look like, incredible incredible yeah <laughs>
Yeah. Absolutely incredible. So it's, it's, it's again, just sitting in the audience alone, just for that part alone is just really exciting to see. And it's, it's inspiring. It makes you want to stick to it. You know what I mean? So, so going back to, so managing expectations, the reason why we came up with this topic is a few, is a couple things for new competitors coming to the sport when they first start competing and to know like how to manage yourself going into your first show. But then also when we're at this kind of level that we're talking about as far as national level, you said a couple of things in the last podcast that got my brain going as far as, um, you know, you've got a client that took took third. So she was one spot away from winning her pro card at Universe. And now you have to manage the expectation of, okay, so technically if numbers work out, she should be the next one in line to get her pro card. But of course, that's not always the case. You know, things can happen like we were just talking about from, from class to class. Things can happen from show to show. We've got new pros coming out to the circuit right now. That's a big one. You know, people don't think about this. There are people that just went pro at Universe. There are people that just went pro at, at Junior Nationals. There's going to be people that go pro at Masters, at USAs. And these girls are good. You know, these girls are good coming into this. We're seeing this on a... I think a hyper level when we look at the um, the European circuit, because I've mentioned this a few times in um, my wrap ups and things like that for the shows over in Europe, because what's happening is those numbers are exploding over there and expanding really fast. And the quality of competitors is getting better and better and better. So you're seeing these brand new pros in Europe come out and just crush it. You know, completely, completely blow out of the water. Some of the girls that have been, have been winning shows for a couple of years now, you know, because they just fit the criteria better because there's more people to choose from. When you've got more competitors, then you get, get closer to that, that criteria with every class. So just because you're the next in line doesn't mean that somebody is, isn't going to come in that fits the criteria better. So right. A good example, you know, with your client there, how are you managing her expectations going into the rest of the season? Have you decided what you're going to do next or, or anything like that? Have you figured that out? So when we talked about that on the last podcast, that was the athlete that was in my room right before I got on with you and Sarah. Yeah. And we were talking through a lot of things. My goal was she, she's been in prep for a long time. Um, so, but she feels good and she's healthy and her body's responding. So first thing we talked about is, are you okay? Like, are you feeling yeah. okay? Do you want to keep mm -hmm. pushing? And she, you know, we had some conversations of some things that she was feeling and she was like, but I think I can continue. And I'm like, all right, so there's the check. Um, she does travel for work. Um, and God, she's, she's got such an amazing boss. Um, so she was like, Hey, I have a work trip. I wanted her to go to USA. So next okay. weekend, because I didn't yeah. want to take eight weeks for North Americans. Um, so she was like, I have this work trip. My boss has been so understanding about competing. I have to do this work trip. So we have to do North Americans. I was like, okay. So we were managing North Americans and things like that. Um, she left my room. She called her boss and just to touch base and tell him about the weekend. And the boss was like, well, why, why wouldn't you go to USC's in two weeks? That seems like the more reasonable option. And then you can just finish out the season like your coach. Because I told her no matter what, whether it's USC's or North Americans, we're shutting it down after that national show, no matter what. And he was like, let's just do that. You're so close. And I'll figure out whatever you, wherever you need to be that weekend. So cool. So um, we're, we're going to USC's. And I, I told okay. her, you know, we did very well. Obviously, mm -hmm. I can't promise a pro card, but I think that we could get a little bit tighter and a little bit fuller, and we're just going to show up with an improved package, and we're going to yep. see what happens. And she she totally gets it, you know? Yeah. She's totally understanding of it. Um, I think at USC's, too, it's top two, and then with North Americans, it's only the, the first in the Correct. Yeah. group. So yeah. that was also in her in her gears as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, a lot of the girls got sick. Did any of your clients get sick from, from Universe? I have two that are sick right now, and Ashley was one of them. So she's managing. No. Oh. right now oh, one of wow. them got no. covid one of my girls oh, wow. got covid and then one um she's just sick she's got like the respiratory thing yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, but but she's fine she's still dropping and everything's good so um yeah so it's it's hard you know you think in that and that thought of you know i i should be next and things like that but i can't guarantee who's going to show up and what they look like and no one can, but we just have to continue mm -hmm. to come with the expectation of we're going to do our best. And I felt like I could bring her in better than I did at universe. So that's what mm -hmm. we're going to work towards. Yep. And then, you know, some things that you can't um, plan for too, like for example, at uh, universe, Sandy was supposed to be one of the judges and she wasn't, you know? So it's like, okay, well, you're, if you're planning on getting in front of Sandy there and now she's, I'm assuming she's probably going to be judging USA as well. She didn't judge masters. So I'm I sorry. Know, uh, at USA's. I know she'll be at masters. Mass. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know about USA's either. I haven't actually been out to USA's in a while because we always have a local show that weekend. So I always, I've never been there. there. 
I've gone. This is actually the times. first year it's, they moved it out of Vegas, and it used to be a two day show for the athletes yes. for the girls. Yes. Well, they moved it back to California this year, and it's only a oh, one okay. day show. Oh, I didn't know that. So I didn't even look because again, we have a local show, but I've been to it several times in Vegas. Um, and the other thing, so a little history lesson on this stuff too. We were talking about this a little bit again on the on the coaching call. A lot of these shows, the reason why they're structured the, the way they are is because of the men's bodybuilding. It's not because of bikini because or any other female divisions because they didn't exist. But when you look at the schedule and how the they reward pro cards for the men's bodybuilding, like the big titles for men's bodybuilding are USA's and nationals. So people used to do men used to do junior usas they you, they don't give a pro card out at junior usas at all for the men's bodybuilding no pro cards so for example hunter labrada he won the overall there a couple of years ago he didn't get a pro card right so they would do junior usas as their warm-up and then they would go into usas to try to win their pro card same thing when we're talking about nationals they would do junior nationals as their warm-up and then go into nationals to win their pro card. So this is how it used to work back in the day. You know, it's it's different now. So when we look at the numbers and we look at the prestige of the shows, USA's and nationals are your top two national shows. Those are your top two. So that's why they say like, if you come out of those shows winning your pro card or winning the overall, you tend to do very well. Like when you look yeah. at the girls that have won like the overall at nationals, Janet Leung is one of them. Um, I know that right off the top of my head. I'm thinking, I think maybe Lauren and Dana Miller. Yeah. Ari. So, yep. Top Olympians. Mm -hmm. They end up being top Olympians or Olymp Olympia winners. You know what I mean? Because they're coming out of the top national level shows. Prestigious national. Yes. So now, now that doesn't, doesn't see that mean that if you win your pro card someday, someplace else, you're not going to do that. But I'm just saying that's how that's it. It all started from men's bodybuilding. The, the thought so, process was behind correct. it, right? Right. So, you know, when we're going through the season, this is why I always say like manage the expectations because these shows get harder because the competition gets better and because it is a more prestigious title and people are, some people do wait to get those titles. Some people really want that title and that's what they're going for. You know, just like people go on the pro league, they'll go to the to New York pro, they'll go to Tampa, they'll go to Toronto, they'll go to the major shows to get those titles. Pittsburgh, you know, they want those titles because they're prestigious. It's the same scenario when we're looking at nationals. So again, going back to looking at USA's, it's like, yeah, okay, you're you're next in line to get your to get your pro card, but there could be a girl sitting on the sideline waiting because she wants to get that USA overall. Correct. Yeah. So. Yep. Oh, another one is Danny Phelps. So she, she won the USA's overall. Um, I was there the year that she won it. And the reason why I mentioned her is because she was that one that like when she walked out on stage, I was sitting there in the audience with Francesca Lauren. And I don't know if you remember her, but I was sitting in the audience. I go, she's, she's your overall. As soon as she walked out on stage. So she's your overall winner. And boom, sure enough, she won the overall that day. And it's a huge show. I mean, if you've been to the national, these national shows, it's hundreds of girls deep. But it was like the, immediately when she walked on the stage, it's like you just knew the show was over. And Amy won the overall there too, right? Her broke card year? Amy Delgado? Amy... Delgado? Yes, she did. You're right. She won the overall at USA's. Correct. Mm -hmm. She did. Yep. Yeah. So again, top six Olympia. I mean, right. this is what we're talking about. These are the girls that when they come into these big national shows, that that's what they're going for. They're going for that big title. You know, now and now look at her on the pro league. She's she's doing, you know, New York, Pittsburgh, the major titles. You know, that's and when Tampa, Tampa, she won yeah. Tampa, you know, so these are the major titles. So again, going back to managing your expectations with this, when you're on that level, you know, realizing, you know, the, 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 the paper may say we're next in line, but there's always room for somebody to come in and be like, well, no, my, my turn. Always. Always. <laughs> so. and, in addition to that, you could get up there and bomb your posing or yeah. the peak goes wrong. Like, you know, yes. Yeah. There's lots of things like you get your period, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It could be a thousand different things. So just realize when you go into a show and then the opposite of that can also be true. I'll use myself as an example. When I won my pro card, I've told the story several times, two weeks prior to, I did a local show, got my worst placing I've ever gotten in the NPC two weeks prior to winning my pro card. So it can go the exact opposite way of that too. I, my expectation going into universe that year was I'm just going to go have fun. So I already paid my entry fee. So I'm just going to do my best, get some good pictures, you know, hope for the best or whatever. And I walked away with, with a class with a pro card win. So, you know, you don't know, you go, you have to go into it realizing it could be anybody's day that day. It could be yours, you know, it could be anybody's day. So yeah. 
Um, and then when we transition that over to brand new competitors, I think, I think social media more than anything else has influenced people to think it's easier than it actually is. <laughs> No. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we talk about diet culture a lot. We talk about how we just think we can just diet and get on stage. And, and a lot of people think that that's the case when we're looking at social media, because again, people just put the, the, they post their highlights on social media. They don't post the years that they've spent training. They don't post when they were, you know, struggling to even start. They don't post when they went through and tried to build their metabolism. Right. So the number one thing that I get when I get a competitor in, when I start working with them, like for the first time that they're trying to get on stage is they think they're ready to go right then into prep. And they're not 99.9% .9 of the time. They're not ready. Right. Uh, you just have to get, you have to get all of those things in line. If you're not already eating and training like an athlete, you're not ready to prep. You need the to basics. already be doing those things. Yeah. You need to already be doing those things. And they get the kind of the stars in their eyes thinking, okay, well, if I do this 12 week prep, I'm going to go into the show. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to win the overall da 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 go on to nationals road to pro going to win my pro card in a year kind of thing. doesn't work like that. So I think a lot of the setup for this comes from the very initial consultation. When you talk to your soon to be coach, uh, making sure that they're setting the stage for you. So you understand it's time and a process. Um, I have a new client. She asked me if she thought I, I could get her on stage in a year. And I said, you know, where you are right now, I said, it's, it's doable. I said, but we don't know how your body's going to respond to stuff. I said, we have to first get you into this, doing this correctly. I said, and then once we see that and we see how your body's responding, then we can kind of get a better idea of is a year a good place to go or do we need more time? Do we need less? We might need less. I tell every one of them when I get on a, on a consult call, I may be overestimating the amount of time we need. Once we start seeing your body respond, we may be able to get you there quicker. That's, that's always a possibility, mm -hmm. but plan for plan for the worst and expect hope for the best. You know what I mean? So what do you do when you first get on a new client that's, that's trying to start and you want to try to manage how they're looking at this going forward? Oh, all of that. I mean, I have the same conversation with them, you know, I'm pretty blunt and I say like it could take a year or you could surprise me and you could be a genetic freak and you could be on stage in six months. I don't know mm -hmm. until I get my hands on you. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and to your point too, I, th I, I do see a lot of newer competitors that think it's just about dieting and stepping on stage, um, because of, of, of course, none of us walk around with a camera in our hand 24 seven showing you the hours of cardio and the training. And I wish I had footage of when I first started this, yes, um, me I do. crying <laughs> over a bowl of eggs because I couldn't yeah. finish it. And me crying when my trainer was training me literally crying on the hamstring curl machine. And he was just like, I don't get, keep pushing. And I, that's how I learned how to train. You know, and I wish that someone had that footage of I could say, this is what I did my first yeah. season. Like no, none yeah. of us just, you know, woke up one day and looked like this, you know, this wasn't an accident. You know, there's right. a lot of hard work and training and pivoting and learning that goes into this. But of course that's not on film. You know, people mm -hmm. just see like, oh, we check in for our cardio. Here's me on my treadmill. And here's a cool footage of me doing a back squat in the gym and boom, I'm on stage and I look mm -hmm. like this. And it's, it's hard. It's hard to manage that with someone that's never been like that before or done that before. I think that's, you know, a lot of people are blessed for their first prep to be with a team like Fit Body Fusion with a lot of knowledgeable Agreed. coaches. So they do it right the first time. I hate when I get the, the athletes that have had a not so great experience their first time. Thank God they still want to give the sport a shot because a lot mm -hmm. of them don't make it out alive that first prep and they just yeah. turned their back on the sport because they had such a terrible experience. Um, you know, there's, there's this fine line of, you know, suffering and earning it versus it being neg negligible, you know, to get that mm -hmm. person on stage. And I think that has to do with doing it the right way, healthy from the start, doing a proper reverse diet to get macros into a good spot, learning how to train, you know, learning the basics of, of then bodybuilding and then earning mm -hmm. that, you know, I tell people on the console call time, you're signing up for a bodybuilding show. You haven't even started bodybuilding. You yes. know, so you have to start, start lifting. doing this yeah. sport in order to step on stage. That's right. Absolutely. Well, and then also, you know, some of these local shows are not very competitive, right? So, yes. you know, they it's can, they can walk on, expectation. Correct. Yeah. You can walk on stage and win an overall and be like, okay, I'm ready to go pro. It doesn't work like that. You know, with, with 
10 girls in the entire show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, the, the perfect example, one of the girls that's, um, that's with Fit Body, she went to Universe and she stopped me in the gym afterwards and she just wanted to introduce herself and everything. And, she, and I was like, so how was your first national level experience? She's like, I did not realize like how much muscle these girls have and how big they are. Like her feedback was to go grow. And um, she's like, I didn't, she's like, this was crazy. Like she had a great experience. She, she said, she's like, I loved coming. She's like, but I gotta go grow. <laughs> You know, she had no idea. Like it's until you get up to that point, you just don't know what you're what you're putting yourself up against. So And sometimes you have to do that. You know, there's sometimes you're having those conversations with the client, you're like, You're not big enough. And they're yep. like, Yeah, I am. And you're like, Okay, let's go. And then they see yep. it. And you know, there is value in yep. that, you know, and, and you just try to 100%. be realistic as possible. Like I'm telling you, you don't have enough muscle, just be realistic. You're probably gonna get bottom call out. And they have, I call it the reverse body dysmorphia, where they think mm -hmm. they're bigger and, and tighter Better. than they actually yep. need to be. And as a coach, sometimes you just have to be like, okay, let's go yep. and experience it for yourself. And all the time they come off stage, you're like, okay, I see it now. And that's, and yep. that's there's value in that. Now they see 100%. it. And now they yeah. know what they're working towards. That's right. And it's, it's also about training your eye and things like that too. Like I see it a lot where, again, going back to sometimes, I feel like sometimes girls and their coaches too, they put themselves into the position of, of failing. Like I see girls go into small shows so they can say they want it, want it overall. You know what I mean? And then they get up to nationals and they get crushed. Big fish, small pond. That's yeah. What I say. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, of course they're the ones that'll go on social media and spin it and say, well, ah, you know, placing doesn't matter. Blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. It's like, okay, but maybe if you went into a bigger show versus the one in Timbuktu that nobody showed up to, then you would have a better realistic, more realistic view of what you actually look like. That's being honest with yourself too. You know, like you, you need to be honest with yourself. You need, when I came back to the pro league, I went to New York pro, right? That was the first thing that I went to. And Jamie was like, you should do optimum. Cause it was the same weekend. I was like, no, I want to put myself up against the best. I was like, I understand what I'm doing. I get where I'm putting myself. I said, but I need to see myself against these bodies to see if I even can do this. You know, I, I know, I know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know, she still was like, you need to go to Optimum and not New York. I was like, I get it. I understand where you're coming from. And, and she was right in that regard. If I was looking for placings and things like that, but I wanted to see what my frame looked like and do, do I have the frame to continue to do this or should I just shut it down? You know what I mean? Like I, I wanted, I wanted that, that reality check. Well, you came in with a realistic mindset. Right. You weren't going in for a placing. If you were going right. in for a placing, you would have chose Optimum. You know, and that's the right. conversation you have with your coach. I'm doing New York, not because I want a placing. I want to get up there and just get, get, you know, feedback against the other girls. Yes. And that yes. will help you long term. And now this is the best physique you're ever going to bring to the stage this year right. from that moment of getting right. that comparison. And again, I looked, I, again, it's all strategy too, because I looked at, okay, Laura Lee's in this show, J uh, Janet's in this show. Janet was like, in that show. Yeah. yeah. All these, the girls that I'm the same height, so similar kind of structure, you know, that's what I was looking at. I was like, I know these girls are going to, I know they're better than me. Like, don't get me wrong. I know they're better than me, but I want to see what my frame looks like. I want to see where, where I need to improve. It was pretty clear, you know, I need more muscle, period. I just need more muscle. I still do do. I'm, I, I tell people all the time, I have a girl right now, she's like, she's going into her first show, she's going to a prep in a, in, um, a couple weeks. She's, I'm, I'm pushing food hard right now on her, right? And um, and she's she checked in with me this week and she's like, I went to a local um, posing clinic at my gym and she's like, I'm just so much bigger than all these girls and, and they're so much leaner than me and I feel like I'm just bigger, I have more muscle, blah, blah, blah. I said, listen, I said, first of all, I said, they're probably all in prep. That's the first thing. You're not. I said, I'm pushing a ton of food on you right now. I said, you're not in prep yet. We're pushing this food because we're going to start pulling it back. So I said, so love the fact you got a ton of food right now because it's Enjoy not it going to be there. <laughs> yes. It's not going to be there for forever. It's going to be there for the next couple of weeks and that's it. We'll start pulling. And I was like, I was like, and second of all, I was like, you cannot outgrow bikini. I was like, you can't do it. I said, you're a natural athlete. I said, you know, look, and I sent her pictures of the overall from the universe. I said, look at how much muscle this girl has. I said, you need to be bigger. I said, I've been doing this for 15 years. And my feedback is always grow, 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 grow. I said, if I've been doing it for 15 years and I still need to grow, you can be bigger. <laughs> I time. am so surprised on that, how many women are um, maybe surprised or they feel not attacked, but when they, they're told to grow more. And I'm like, yeah. even at the pro level, we're all told to grow more. Yeah. Like every time I get off, to grow your glutes more, grow your shoulder. Like we're, we're yeah. it's going to be constant feedback, you know, mm -hmm. um, the divisions are only getting bigger every year. That's right. So 
so keep growing and keep staying up with the division. <laughs> yeah. And like I was saying, like, especially if you're a natural athlete, there is no way you were going to outgrow this division. There is no way you're going to do it. Just, it's not possible. Just keep you working. Know? Yeah. The girls, the girls that move up to, you know, to wellness and figure and stuff like that, that is very intentional. It's very, very intentional with their growth, you know? So if you're, if you're pushing hard in the gym and you're eating right and things like that, you are going to still be bikini regardless, you know? Yeah. And then she can't, you know, after I told her that and I showed her the picture, she's like, wow, she's got a lot of muscle. I said, yeah. I said, um, she goes, I'm just getting, you know, comments from people about how much I'm eating and that I'm eating too much. I said, well, that's a them problem, not a you problem. I said, that's, that's that I was like, you need that food. I said, you're using that food. Look at how much, I can't believe how much she has grown in just a matter of a couple of, a couple of months. And that's just because we tweaked her macros and gave her more food and, and her, and her training has changed. It's just crazy how much her body has responded. Food and training is an amazing thing. I, so can, I just, crazy. can I just spend for a second? I am so yeah. sick of people in local gyms going up to our athletes and inserting their advice. I would never ever go up to another woman in the gym and be like, I feel like you should be doing this. That is not my place. Mm -hmm. And also, do, do you really care about that person you're talking to? Do you think that that helps them? I This happened to one of Drew's athletes a few weeks ago and somebody just went up to her and said that you're in the wrong division. Doesn't know her from Adam and just said, you're in bikini, you're in the wrong division. Like, you are not her coach and you don't know anything. You're going to, you're going to combat us. The people that are mm -hmm. at the show every freaking weekend. Who I are know. you? Who are you competing? Who, who's your athletes? What's the last show you've been at? It is very frustrating. Yes. And I don't think anybody has the right to insert their opinion, coach, friend, not like just stay out of it. Everybody's yep. got an opinion. That's fine. Keep it to yourself. That doesn't help the athlete either. If you truly care about the athlete, she made her choice. He made his choice of whoever they want their coach to be. Let them solidify their decision and follow that process. Now this That's poor right. girl, she, she calls, she calls Drew. She's in a panic. Oh my God. Am I in the wrong division? Am I doing what I'm supposed to? Da, 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 da. And, and Drew's like, who is this person? Tell me who that, you know what I mean? Like yeah. what, yeah. What, else, what, what what's their, their qualification? Yeah. What's their qualification? For She's saying like, oh, this. I don't know. <laughs> You know, it's, it's so frustrating. That was my little rant. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. And it happens all the time. Like it, you know, like you said, it's, usually it's the local gym trainer. That's the problem. You know Correct. what I mean? What? And it's like, you, you, what? You paid ISSA $110 and now you're a personal trainer and you can mm -hmm. go and be a bodybuilding coach. Those mm -hmm. are the coaches that are the ones that are screwing the athletes on their first prep and they don't want to come back to the sport because right. that guy knows how to train a lifestyle client to get bigger biceps, but has no clue what to do for a competitor. And yeah. it's sad and it's frustrating as a coach that I started as a personal trainer, you know, I, but I have a bachelor's degree in this and I still feel mm -hmm. like I could have been better in my earlier years as a personal trainer. And you still probably, clients. you still probably wouldn't have gone up to somebody randomly in the gym and been like, Hey, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Never. I Never. own a gym. I own a gym and yeah. I would see people on my stair mill doing those stupid kickbacks and things that they would do. And I would just have to bite my tongue. You know, like that was my gym that I owned and I still never went up to someone. I was like, that's stupid. Please don't do that. Like, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. Like that part that maybe that works for them and that's what makes them feel good. Who am I to judge them? You know what I mean? So that's right. it's, it's a lot. And I just wish that people would just stay in Mind their own life. business. Mind yeah. their own business. Well, and the other part of it too is, is there's that. I agree with you hundred percent. And then there's also the insecurities of a competitor come out as well when you're going through, through prep. So that doesn't help the situation. And then oftentimes they're just talking to people in the gym too. And they're, and they'll just ask Curious. random. Yeah. Random. Like, can you help me? What do you think? Does this look okay? Da, 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 da. Things like that. When they really are not qualified. There. Yeah. When I've they're really not there. qualified to give that, that information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it makes you confused. You know, when you're, right. when you're early on, you're curious. And you're That's trying right. to learn and, and it makes you confused because you don't know what to decipher. Like you just hear somebody else is doing something different in the beginning and you're like, oh, well, maybe I should be doing I should that. Do that, you know? Yeah. And the more you do it, then you realize that that wasn't for you or that was what's best for them. But it takes time to understand that. But yeah. That's where, you know, these first time competitors, it's, it's just like you said, they're very vulnerable, extremely, yes. extremely mm -hmm. vulnerable and, and impressionable. Some, and some people take advantage of that. Absolutely. They sure do. Yeah. Cause they're looking at it from their own, you know, pocketbook standpoint, right? They, they're like, okay, well I can make money off this girl or whatever, that kind of thing. You see it a lot. I mean, unfortunately you see it a lot. 
And as you get more educated in the sport, then you start being able to decipher what's bullshit and what's not. But until you do that, like you're, you're again, you're a sponge, you're taking in information. You know, I, a good example, I had a coach years ago who <laughs> I'll tell a little story about this. I, I started realizing his eye was bad, right? Like he was great as a trainer in the gym. Like I loved his conditioning, all that kind of stuff. It was fantastic. But when it came to actually seeing what you need to see as a bodybuilding coach, he didn't know what he was doing. And I always hire a coach because I can't see myself objectively once I get into a prep. Like I can, I could, I just, I focus on the things that I see that are bad, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm also aware if I'm in shape or if I'm not, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was clearly not conditioned enough for the show that I was going into with the, with this person as my coach. So, you know, going into it a, a couple weeks out, I was already pissed because I knew, I, I knew things were behind. You're behind. I could see it. I could see it. And he was telling me I was fine. I was good. So I had this conflicting thing in my head. And I will never forget because he told me he, could, he told me I could have a refeed and I could have a steak. So I went and got a steak and I like posted about it on my stories. I was at, at Ruth Chris or whatever with, with my husband and stuff. And and the next day I saw him in the gym and he's like, wow, you look really good. I'm posing. Da, 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 da. He's like, yeah, this is great. You look fantastic. And then so we're talking a little bit more. And he's like, so that steak you got at Ruth Chris, he's like, did it have all the butter and everything on it? I go, what does it matter? You just said I look good. Like he was trying to tell me, like, he was like, just trying to tell me like, why didn't you get your, your steak dry or whatever? Cause he saw it on my social media and everything. And I, and I was like, why is it matter? You just told me I look fantastic. So <laughs> it just, his whole face so which one just is like, it? right. His whole face just dropped. Right. Which one is it? Like he was trying to shame me for having butter on my steak. Funny. You know what I mean? Like that's what he was trying to do. And I was like, no, bitch. He just said I look good. Maybe <laughs> I the know, butter right? did that. Exactly. Exactly. I was like, hmm. So anyway, long story short, he, he wasn't my coach after that show. I had, but a, I had a first. I had a first as a coach this past weekend. I had a girl that stepped on stage on Saturday in Orlando, and I wasn't there in person. Jamie was there, and um, the, the head judge was Jack Sullivan, who had judged St. Pete a couple weeks before. Yeah. And he was going for a much fuller look. Yeah. Um, so my client MJ wakes up that morning. She looks, she looks great. She's like, she's tight. She's, she could, could have been fuller. Um, so we, we fed into the show. And then, so I, I got her stage photos from pre-judging and I was like, oh, she could be fuller for Jack. Mm -hmm. She could be, I gave her a burger and fries. I was, it, it was, I was, it was my gut instinct. I've never done this. I was a little concerned, but I was like, you know, it's done. Like pre yeah. it's done, whatever. Like they're not going to rejudge it. She, yeah, the the best she case, like. she's in the overall. Yep. So um, I was like, all right, let's go out. Let's go get a burger and fries. I gave her some parameters on like keeping mm -hmm. the fats low and stuff. And she came back and she looked incredible. I was oh, like, nice. yes, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> but she was that lean, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. you know, so I, I don't know. It was, it was really cool because I've never done that before, but I was like, I, and I told her, I was like, I've never done this before. So are you willing to try it? She's like, yeah, I'm willing. Like, she's like, I think yeah. it will actually shoot. She's like, I think it will actually help. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was, I was interesting. That was my first one. I won't do it so very funny. often, but it worked. Well, you know, <laughs> when the, when the risk profile is low, that's when you start making making decisions that you can try stuff, you know, yeah. like I know, I know with uh, Rihanna winning that show, I know she's doing Chicago next. Right. Yeah. So she can try some things now because she's already got her Olympic qualification. Why not? Yeah. Right. Throw some, and people throw say that some all the time. Like, why would you keep doing shows when, you know, when, it, well, if you're not a hundred percent of maybe the show you win, maybe try something yeah. else. Just like, like this now is practice for the Olympia. That's right. You know? And, and you got to get in front of different judging panels. And like, you know, Rihanna was super full and bubbly at, at uh, Orlando. So she's got to see if that's the look they want. She said her feedback was that she needed to come in a little bit tighter. So that's what he said. A smidge. smidge. <laughs> no, she told me, she said, I was so, she's like, I was so full. She's like, I was actually uncomfortable. She's like, <laughs> she's like, if Jamie wasn't there, I would have freaked out. That's what she told me. And I was like, I get it. I understand. Some, but sometimes you got to risk it. Sometimes, you know, it's worth putting it out there. It was a good thing it worked for, you know, worked for. Yeah. And just like you said, risk it now. 
you know, mm -hmm. now's the time to make those risks so that you can really figure out what you want to bring to the Olympia. Very similar to what Ashley Kay and Adam are doing, right? That's They've right. done all these shows now. They've brought in a little bit of a different package each show. That's Actually, right. the show that she came in second or third, right. that was his favorite look. And he says yep. he's bringing that look to the show. And I agree. That was Ashley's best look. And I think that will do very well at the Olympia. Um, but that's why you do that, you know? So even yep. that, her, that was not her best placing, but that was their favorite look. And they yeah. wouldn't have known that if they don't do so many shows you know so that's right there's value in that 100%. well it's funny because i agree i agree with that because there's you know i, I obviously I, I i do raps all the time so i'm looking at ashley all the time <laughs> you know yes. what i mean and i was like i agree i was like she yeah she was full for that lineup don't get me wrong she looked bigger than everybody else at that lineup but one thing i always see with her she tends to have like a little bit of water on her lower back she has a little bit of distension in the, in the, in the abs or whatever she didn't have any of that like she looked, she looked tight and full at the same time. So I was like, it's actually, to me, I agree. I think it was a great look for her. And so, again, it goes I mean, back to that was her best look, but it was the outlier that day of who showed yeah, up, right? And that's, that's right. the things you got to think about at the, especially at the pro league. Like there's so many variables that go mm -hmm. into the winner that day, including the other bodies on stage. That's right. She that day looked the most Olympia look. And if that mm -hmm. was the look at the Olympia, it would have been a much higher placing That's right. but for what everybody else showed up looking that day she was the outlier and sometimes yep. the outlier isn't a good thing you know so it's this is why we do this though this, this yeah. is so frustrating but it makes you just want to keep going and showing up and trying to improve <laughs> well and that goes back again to setting expectations because her expectation that show i'm sure was she wanted to get another win you know of but, course. At the, but at the same time you know like she doesn't need another win she needs right. to figure out what her winning look for the olympia is going to be that's her right. need you know, so you have to look at those kinds of things, too, and setting the expectation where, OK, well, maybe this didn't work for this particular show this day. But when we go to the next one, it will. It will. You know? Right. And that could be so, confusing, too, and frustrating. Yeah. But that's where you got to really read in between the lines on yep. feedback and what what it was, who was there. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, just, keep, you know, keep taking that data and keep taking that yeah. feedback. Well, I used that story a few a few podcasts ago. I was talking about the girl that I worked with with her posing a few years back where she, her first show, she won the overall novice open overall, the whole thing. She won the whole show, her first show, came back the following year, did a local natural show. She's natural too, but she just built a lot more muscle and she didn't win her class. Didn't even win her class. She came in second. And then she went on to win Junior USA's the following week, winning, winning her pro card, winning second overall, winning her pro card. A week later when she didn't win her show at a local natural show and i told yeah. her that you just don't look like anybody else on the stage i said you look like you belong at a national level show you don't look like you belong in a natural local show so you are the outlier you are the one i'm like i'll be honest i'm surprised you got second i would put you lower because of everybody else that's on stage just that's just yeah. the way it is you know and that's a frustrating thing too when you're clearly the the best physique for like a, yeah. a national level, but at a small local show, you it's, it, it looks you stick weird. Out. It looks like it's, it's very frustrating, but yeah. Yeah. Again, it's... having realistic expectation of the show that you're choosing, you know, if you're doing a smaller show with a smaller promoter, more than likely you're not going to see the same girls that are going to nationals or if they right. are, they're not going to be doing well. You know, that's why you really got to get it with these bigger promoters where the talent's high. That way you can get a true yeah. representation of what you look like and what's going to the national show with you next. Yes. Because the other side of that too, is that trying to test things before going to national national level shows are expensive. They're expensive oh. places to learn lessons. <laughs> <laughs> national shows you easily spend two three grand you know easily. between travel and your entry fee i mean these yes. women in the master's divisions they're doing three sometimes four divisions if they do the open right. and they're 50 or 50 45 30 like they're it's mm -hmm. expensive 250 bucks a pop minimum per class that's right like that's why right. are you just going to show up if you just to get feedback like that's not the place to do that <laughs> nope absolutely not absolutely i mean unless not. you have unlimited funds then sure whatever but yeah but I instead I you know spend my money on other things right well again and, and instead of spending thousands going to national level find a regional show go to that one where it's going to be less expensive you're going to get a better truer look of what you look like and then decide, okay, I'm ready to go up or no, I, I think I need a little bit more time for whatever reason in order, whether it's to grow or shrink or whatever it might be, you know, cause then you don't spend the thousands, you spend a few hundred, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and time too. Again, going back to like what I was talking about with my client going into masters now, like 
I told her at Universe before we knew that she could do masters, we thought she could do North Americans with her citizenship. Like I was, I don't want to lose those two months of growth. Like, cause she's a citizen of, in Canada. She's a resident here in the States. So she only has a couple of shots here in the States to actually get a pro card. As far as that's concerned, we thought <laughs> once I talked to JM, I realized I was like, Oh, she can actually do all of these shows. So anyway, when anyway, in doubt, we... <laughs> call JM. that's right. You know, exactly. You know, it's front back side, side. I know. I was like, Oh, it's right there in black and white. Cool. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so we, you know, we're trying to manage that part of it too. The expectation of, we know she only has a couple of shows where she can get this done. So how do we do this and also get her best package on stage? So those are all things you have to take into, into consideration. And then and again, once we figured that out, that she could do masters, like, well, okay, well, let's do that. And then we can go into a growth season. I said, regard, I told her, I said, regardless of if you win your pro card or you don't or whatever, I said, after the show, I really highly suggest we shut it down and grow. I mean, because that's where that's, if you get into the pro league, you're going to have to grow. I said, if you still need to do more in order to get your pro card, you're going to have to grow. I mean, that's, that's what your feedback was from Edela. You know what I mean? So we're going to come in a little tighter and just see if she can fare a little bit better. And then we'll, and then we'll take it from there. But, uh, you know, taking another two months, I was like, I'd rather have that two months of growth. Growth. You know? So yeah, I those mean, are... if there's one thing that we can, you know, say is the division is only getting bigger. So if yeah. you are on the fence and you're being told to grow, shut it down now. I'm That's telling right. you like, it, the, the, and just like we said earlier, like the more the national shows go on, they're only going to get more competitive. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the thought of like, Oh, I'm top of the second call out. Maybe if I keep going, I'm going to get lucky. It's probably not, you know, probably so like, if you're, yeah. yeah, if you're, if your feedback is to grow, just yeah. shut it down now and start growing and then be ready for next year, next year, you know, and something else too, is there's, it's still shocking to me how many women, especially at a national level are not staying for feedback. Like that is crazy to me because if you are at a national level show, remember you are asking to be a professional. So why would you not stay to the people that are about to hand you that pro card and say, how can I be better? And I don't also like the response when I ask people that, well, I already know what the feedback's going to be. Do you? Because I've thought that too before. And when I go, they tell me something completely different than I thought or something, something I could do to change my posing or something that I could be better for the next show. You know, mm -hmm. and especially with Etila, she takes her time. There is a reason why that line at Universe is so long, because she spends at least five minutes with each athlete. And some of them, That's she right. says, take your robe off, put your shoes back on, pose here. Yep. And she'll tell you what to fix. That is mm -hmm. valuable information. So grow if they're telling you to grow and stay for feedback. That yeah. meal that you really want, I get it. Bring a protein bar, eat it in line. The meal will be there in an hour, but mm -hmm. finish the job. You are wanting to be a professional. You need to ask what you need to do in order to gain that status. Yeah. And as a coach, when the judge says what we've been telling our clients, it's validation. You know, sometimes with the client, they're like, they have their own thing and thought in their head of what they need to do. And us as a coach, we're trying to communicate, no, this is what you need to do. When the judge says what we say, <laughs> it's like, it's, it just, for the athlete, it clarifies things. They're like, well, the judge is saying the same thing that my coach is saying. So, you know, before I, my I, first Olympia qualification in 2022, we were at a Nashville fit and I wanted to shut it down. I barely made it to that show. And Sandy came backstage and Jamie said, right to Sandy, should she continue? And Sandy said, Jordan, I think you need to continue. And the next weekend was Charleston and I won it. Had I mm -hmm. shut it down, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't qualify for the Olympia that year, right? Yep. So it's, uh, and if I didn't stay for feedback, I would have just left and I would have been on my poo poo me high horse and I would have shut my season down, you know? Yep. So it's really important. It's really, really important to listen to them. And I promise you that these judges care about you as an athlete. Because remember, do. after after I won the Charleston the next weekend, Sandy said to me respectfully, I don't want to see you for a while to the Olympia. <laughs> like she wanted me to rest, you know? Yeah. So they mm -hmm. care about you. They're not going to tell you to continue if they truly don't think that you can improve. They, they yes. will tell you to shut it down if they feel like you need to and rest. One of the one of the feedback made me laugh at, uh, at Universe. I was there with um, one of the girls. I was just her posing coach. Her coach wasn't there, so I was interpreting, you know? Um, and Adela goes, so the girl, she asked Adela, she goes, so how was my posing and, and all that kind of stuff? She goes, I didn't write anything about your posing. So that means your posing was good. She's like, I only write down things about posing if it was really bad. So you weren't bad. <laughs> Fair. I, was like, I was like, cool. <laughs> We're <Yeah>. good. <laughs> you know, she's like, I only write about posing if it's bad. <laughs> 
she is, and, that, and I love that. Like when Ezra started judging and she was coming back and giving like posing advice, I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah. You know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they, they're seeing it on stage and she's telling them like, turn your toe here. She's looking, she's like, that's what I want to see. And I'm like, mm-hmm. right back up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's it's yep. awesome. It made me yeah. laugh. Yeah. It made me laugh. I was like, it was, as her posing coach standing there, I just started yeah. laughing. I was like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, oh, but yeah, uh, it's uh, it's it's a whole thing. Like it's 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 fun to do the strategy and all that kind of stuff. But it's just like anything else, any kind of game that you play. You know, there's always going to be th- things that are thrown at you. There's always going to be curveballs. There's always going to be things that that you didn't see coming. So that's kind of the fun part about it. Like you said, like you just that's what keeps us keeps us addicted to it because we want to get better. But sometimes it's just, it, that's just just is not possible. You know, that right. whatever it may be, we may end up not being better. And that's something that we have to take into consideration when we do this kind of stuff too. It's like, you know, the first year when I came back and I did uh, New York and Dallas, I wanted to come back to Dallas with better conditioning. I got my period the day of the show. My conditioning was terrible. So I was like, oh, <laughs> well, that did not work. <laughs> but at that point too, I said, I was like, you know, I know what my feedback is that I need to go grow. I was like, I could try and push to another show to get my conditioning back on point again i said but what's the point at this point at what cost yeah yeah i'm still gonna be told i need to go grow so i mean it is what it is i didn't accept, i got my period that night like of the, the night of the show so I, I could like you know that feeling where you could feel you're pulling water all day that was mm-hmm. me in dallas like i just could feel myself expanding throughout the day <laughs> you know it's like what is going on and i got my period that, that just night. puts you in the, the worst mood too 100 <laughs> percent. i was like let's well, screw yeah. this i was like i'm gonna go have some popcorn i don't care <laughs> i was yeah. like you know you can just you can just feel it you know and yeah. so but again going back to i could have pushed and done another show so i could pull that water off of me and look better or whatever but at the end of the day i knew my feedback again was going to be go grow so why why put myself through that go grow you know so those are the things you have to have to take into consideration too so you know manage your expectations in regard to making sure you know what level you're going into making sure that you are prepared for whatever may, may happen whether it's good or whether it's bad and just do your best do your best every time you get on that stage that's all you can do you know at the end of the day there's things you're not going to be able to control as, as much as we wish we could control every little thing, <laughs> there are things, you know, like, like the hair and makeup appointments, a lot of them at Universe were behind schedule and girls were getting freaked out about that. Like, you know, there's things that, that you can't control. Like you just have to breathe through it and you need to make sure that you can get there. You know, there's things you can't control. So don't let yourself stress out about it. Don't let yourself get all freaking messed up in the head about it. You know, just kind of breathe. And again, going back to those classes were super long between you know 50 and 40 your whole body can do something completely different just as part of it you can't control that you know there's always things there's always things that you can't you can't control so you know hope for the best and prepare for the worst and have, fun. <laughs> and have fun have fun you when you're doing that's a big hard. part of it too right that's a big yeah. part of it too like the, have fun have fun with this this is supposed to be a hobby you're supposed to have fun and it's supposed to be hard you know, it's supposed to challenge you. It's, you know, the discipline behind it. You're, you're supposed, you're, it's supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be difficult. That's what makes right. us want to do more of it. You know what I mean? Exactly. So if it wasn't hard, everybody would do it. This is why it's a niche sport and 99.999% of people can't even think about doing it. So consider yourself to be in that less than one percentile. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If you At step the end of the day, stage, you're an elite. You are a part of an elite group, you know? Absolutely. And I, I, and we see so, so many girls that step up on the stage and they just don't look like they're having fun. You know, there's yeah. just no pop to their routine. They yeah. have a great physique, but they're just not interesting. They're too serious. They're overthinking yeah. things or they just are looking like they don't want to be there, you know? So just, yeah. just go have fun, you know? Yeah. And literally like when I won Charleston, that I told you guys that story all the time. Like I went out at that night show and I was like, I don't care what my routine looks like. I'm not following the rules on what my routine is. I'm just going to go out there and do whatever my body wants and smile and have fun. And that's what they said. You were so captivating. You looked like you were having fun and you were smiling and we could not take our eyes off you. And yep. I probably didn't hit my side glute and lift and, you know, arch the way I should, but I just looked like I was enjoying myself, Absolutely. you know, so there's value in that a lot. You know. Yep. Now I tell that story too with myself with the winning my pro card because Jim Mannion was my head judge when I won my pro card, and I wasn't expecting him to be there when I walked out on stage. I was expecting to see um, Steve at the head judge seat. So uh, I told I told the story again to JM this this past weekend. We were just talking. We were just sitting there talking. I was like, um, 
I was like, yeah, your dad's the one that actually gave me my pro card. I was like, because I walked on stage and he was at the head judge's seat. And I freaked out because I wasn't expecting to see Jim Manning as my head judge. Oh, oh, oh. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, oh no, what do I do? <laughs> and He's so sweet. <laughs> he is. And he made like a motion to the expediter behind me. I thought he was motioning to me. So I started walking and he goes like this. And I go, oh, and I just did this little like animated like little step back move. And I was like laughing. He started cracking up. And I was like, all right, well, I'm done. And then I ended up winning my pro card. He, stuck, he pulled me out first, stuck me in the center, and never moved me. And I was like, all right, I guess that's what I needed to do. I made, needed to make an ass out of myself in order to win my pro card. But hey, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> so, like, I couldn't oh plan God. that. Like, I tell people all the time, like, I could have planned that Steve had to go to the bathroom during my class and Jim was going to be my head judge. And the president of the IFBB. Yeah. It's just like, exactly. hey. that's, that's, that's plan for you know like it's just it just is but a pretty cool way to win your pro card like absolutely yeah i think that was it because i think i don't know if they still do this or not because i haven't looked but they that was back when they used to actually publish the scorecards so Uh i was that was the only show where i had ones across the board like every single judge put me in first place i was like oh Thank you. I know. I was like, after making an idiot out of myself, I guess that maybe I missed my calling being a stand-up comic or something. I don't know. <laughs> and that's why you became a great posing coach. <laughs> right? Exactly. You just got to roll with it. You got to roll with the punches, man. You just got to roll with the punches. Because again, it could end up being your, it could end up being the thing that pushes you over the edge. Who knows? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so with that, we can kind of wrap it up for today. Is there anything else that you wanted to add before we close out? No, I think that's a good one. Good luck to everybody that's getting ready for the rest of the national shows. We're yeah, kind of just getting started. We're like in the middle of the season. So this is this know. is the heart. This is the heat of the season right now. From now until September, really. Like it's just like yeah. back to back to back to back to back. This is this is when it gets really, really crazy. So yep. hang on um, tight. Keep your head <laughs> yeah. clean. If you're on cardio right now, keep pushing and stay right? in the lane. You know? Yeah, yeah. Watch uh, our cardio theater. I, I watch our own podcast during my cardio. To be honest with you, I do that because I forget what I say sometimes, and I'm like, oh, did I like oh. that myself? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, shoot. <laughs> Good episodes. Yeah, yeah. So like, weird. yeah, I know, right? We, we, you, guys, you guys tell us, and that's always fun too. Like going to the shows and meeting people that listen to us and everything as well. It's like get that at every show I go to. So I'm sure you I do love as that. Well. I love when someone comes up and they're like, I just want me to know. I listen to the yeah. podcast. So like, okay, but do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you do you like me? <laughs> yes. I love when I love when you guys come up to me and like I love your guys' podcast. And you know, as yeah. Sean and I always say, we're always looking for your guys' feedback on topics and things you want us to talk on. So. You know, put them in the comments if you guys have something that you guys want us to discuss. And we're mm-hmm. always like, like this podcast is for you guys. Like we're trying right. to give back to you guys and educate, see what we see. So we love your feedback and we love when you guys come Absolutely. up to us at shows. And I know that it, it makes me want to keep showing up for the podcast, which is why we're on episode 46. 46. Right? 46. Yeah, we're at 46 now. <laughs> It'll yeah. almost be a year. The Olympia yeah. yeah, really was like our, you know, Tahoe our, uh, around August. So it's almost yeah, it was right after, year. right after Tampa, because I had you do the, 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 um, the video for Cutie Scarf on the Stage at, at Tampa. Right. Yeah. Yep. So, Which that's yeah, we've been too. a year of this. So we need your feedback, you know, <laughs> yeah, right? so many topics and there's so many things that I'm sure that we don't think of that you guys would want to listen to. So we really appreciate you guys and we love that you continue to listen and love it. And we're just really Absolutely. appreciative. Absolutely. So with that, you guys, as always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the buttons wherever they may be on your device. Uh, this is episode 46. We are back on the right episode and we'll see you back here again for the next one next week. All right. Bye guys.